Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, I am Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Basic human rights are inalienable rights. They are those rights that were designed even before you were put here on this earth. That would guarantee you heaven while being here, if you conform to those basic principles. I have the experience of 40 years walking away in the wilderness. If you can see me right now, you see the hair is white. I started when the hair was jet black. I think I was about 28 years old. Now I'm 70. And I've been all throughout this country listening to people talk about what they want of God, praying to God for this and praying to God for that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I used to listen to you tell me that and I prayed, but God told me, I want, gave me an answer, got me up off my knees and sent me out throughout this nation to tell you what was required of, of uh, God, of you, to get what you are asking God for. And I went out and did what I did even took some strange steps, ran for president of the United States at least three times. As a poor man, without any money, but had a dream, had a vision of your answers to your prayers being received by you. Yes, went around, you want your houses and your food and all of these things that you desire. Okay, let me share them with you. And I'm sharing it with you, but if you put me, make me president of the United States, then you give me a platform so maybe you can Listen, well, you weren't hearing that. I don't know if you didn't have any interest because I was black or because I was didn't have any money or just because you just weren't interested in God or thinking that God could have anything in control of a black man. You know, most of you think that God is, well, I'm not going to go there just yet. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the finale, finality of that 40-year uh, travel in this wilderness 40 years that allowed me to speak with authority and I've spoken to you on the subject matter the one true God my first topic and the second topic of post second topic of post the anti-God Satan the God of choice and how and what would it take to return the individual and the nation back to God and today I'm going to talk about what we call the bottom line. It's going to put some uh, finality to that program or to that uh, purpose. The bottom line is this. God, who will mankind choose to be ruler? God or Satan? God's plan is for mankind to experience heaven wherever they reside, on earth, or some other place. The requirements for such is that God is honored, respected simply by treating one another as they themselves want to be treated. You see how simple it is? To have heaven on earth, all you got to do is treat other people like you want to be treated. Now, is that complicated? How complicated can that be? You say you love God, you don't see God. How can you show you love God? By loving what God has created. My, 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 my. This process establishes peace. It establishes prosperity. It establishes freedom, the joy of life, and the fulfillment of dreams. It is affirmed that a power exit outside of man that they can't see touch or feel a power responsible for the earth and all resources that God and God alone created for the making of man's dreams resources given by God that no one no one not Americans not white folks not black folks not Asians not anybody can claim as their own now Satan bottom line. On the other hand, Satan is empowered when mankind refuses to honor and respect God. So Satan's initiative is to create disharmony by dividing the human race, black and white. 
Satan has chosen the white people as his instrument because they are, as far as the USA is concerned, they're easier, and at least according to what Trump has said, to mislead and do harm to one another. Satan has convinced them that they are more important than other people, that they deserve the best from among the God-given resources. Satan has convinced them they are more godly due to their skin shade, the straightness of their hair, and the color of their eyes. Satan has convinced them that all the things of God belong to them. When I say that skin color, the straightness of their hair, that's what they put in the Bible to represent. You know, they said uh, we were made in God's image. And since God is a spirit, I wonder what his image looks like. But anyway, the bottom line is what the world is faced with today here in the USA is a battle for God's plan of life for humans or Satan's plan of life for humans. Satan has captured the minds of many people around the world. Satan has used the most evil of men to do his biddings. The men are called dictators, kings, and pharaohs. These men will use the tools of Satan and are willing to kill anyone that does not fall in line, as is known of the North Korean dictator killing of family members to amass his power and instill fear in opposition. In the year 2016, the most obvious evil white person in the United States, riding high on being white, flaunting Satan's money, came on the scene using the tools of Satan to capture what liberty America possessed for himself and Satan. Like other dictatorships around the earth, including Russia, North Korea, China, to name a few, where the people relinquished their individual authority and placed it in the hands of one man, Satan's agent. This American agent of Satan has split the nation, black and white, the haves and have nots. Like all dictatorships or banana republics, Satan has found a group of people in the USA willing to compare this agent, this devil, with Jesus. They who at one time called themselves lovers and worshipers of God are now willing to accept lies as truth, stealing from the poor by every means possible as justified to maintain their Satan-given status of superiority over others. Bottom line, though it is God's plan to have the whole inhabited earth as paradise, heaven on earth for all humans alive at any given time, Satan's plan is to have one world government as well. Heaven is to be the only for only a few. The master's role will be to serve the few as need dictates, and when the masses are too many, a great potion will be exterminated. That's Satan's plan for you. For the American people, the writing is on the wall. While you still have a small amount of power, use it to bring God's plan to the forefront now. Satan is not waiting. Right now, Satan has many whites and blacks and others being tricked into his service. God is aware of the deception taken. And he placed God is aware of the deception taking place. And has chosen a few agents to do the work of sharing the truth in an attempt to wake the masses and set them free. To live according to the plan of life. Most of these so called men of God work for Satan. Don't forget that. They do not know God, so they use a book 
a Bible, Koran, etc., to fake it. They are after what Satan offers, money. Bottom line, who will you choose? Who will you support? Who will you empower? Today, it was reported by this Christian magazine started by Billy Graham. Even though Billy Graham supports this immoral man as president of the United States, and having made it known throughout the world that he's immoral, his son still supports him. And the article from the magazine says, well, we've known that he was no good all along, but we wanted to be patient to see if it was possible for him to change. But we see now, immorality is his nerve, and we renounce him, and whatever he brings to the United States of America is not fit in the face of God. Now, that was a white, right-wing, evangelical newspaper representing an organization. So I say, ladies and gentlemen, we are waking up. A lot of us have never been asleep, but we didn't do anything. We fussed and fought. We walked around in circles trying to see if a miracle would happen. And when that miracle didn't happen, we went home and sat down and got old and got sick, mad because you didn't uh, qualify for health care. You didn't qualify for a decent standard of living. And you sat around and you waited to die. And having done that, you left your children to go through the same things that you've gone through. And we say today that our children are smarter than us. And they're going to stand up and do more than has been done by us. I want to remind you that this generation supposedly was supposed to be smarter than the last generation. But it is this generation that got us here, not the last one. And so you don't know what our children are going to do. I can say this. Our children are not going to be any better than we. If we stand up, our children will stand up. If we sit down, our children will lay down with their pants around their knees, smoking some weed, and getting drunk and trying to see how much sex they can have until the devil comes and wipes them out. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so very much for giving me this opportunity to share with you the good, wonderful message in a short form of what God has given to me through 40 years, 40 years. And I summed it up in at least about an hour and a half in the three or four posts. Once again, I want to thank you so much, and I hope that you will listen to this, and I hope that it will mean something to you. If it doesn't, hey, what can I say? I only can be obedient, and I have been, and I am proud that I did. I'm so glad that I did. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and all of you have a great day and a wonderful life. Goodbye.